Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray Zero Space and X-Plane 12. One of my enduring issues with X-Plane 12 has been the lack of the SR-71, X-15, and the Space Shuttle, for instance, in X-Plane 12. We had them in X-Plane 11, and they they might not have worked quite right, maybe, maybe not, uh, but they were there, and I was able to fly them. I was able to make videos of the X-15 dropping from the B-52 and all that. And uh, that's sort of the thing I want from X-Plane. I don't want to fly a Cessna, really. I want to fly really extreme planes or weird planes like the Beluga. So I have decided to try and copy the SR-71 from X-Plane 11 into X-Plane 12 since I have both. And I just copied the folder. I did have a mod for the SR-71. It was a sound and effects mod. I don't know how that's going to affect things. But... Here's the question, will it work? Uh, it's just a straight copy, I haven't done anything else. So I didn't go into the airplane editor or anything like that. But uh, you should be aware that I did have a mod for it which might affect things. So, yeah. Well, the first thing is engine type 4 engines. I'm not entirely sure. It might be that it was configured like that in x 11 as well. It's a complicated thing, the SR-71. It says 6 hours of flight time, which probably isn't what's going to happen unless I can't light the afterburners or something. And we are going to see what's going to happen. We're going to take off from Edwards Air Force Base and I'm just going to go across the country because that'll give me plenty of landing spots. I don't know what kind of range we're going to get with this. So forgive the sonic booms everyone, but we are going to try this as is. I'm not doing a startup procedure with it. I'm just going to start with engines running and see how it goes. Okay, well, we have a cockpit. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, yep, uh, floodlights. I don't know if they work or not, though. We can turn the dial. Well, the console lights definitely work. Side panels. I can't really tell that one. Alright, but yes, there's plenty of things that could work. I would not want to try the... Um, autopilot with this but we will see how it goes altitude that looks like the right altitude uh, this is Edwards Air Force Base we're on a dirt strip and the external model looks fine one thing that happens with a lot of X-Plane 11 planes is that they can't retract their landing gear so we'll keep an eye on that but it's looking pretty good so far Looking very spiffy. I insist on having an SR-71 available to me. I still have X-Plane 11 installed just for planes like this. And it would be nice to be able to uninstall it because I have X-Plane 12 now, but because X-Plane 12 doesn't have planes like this, I keep it installed. Uh, but yeah, Flight Sim, I guess somebody was developing the SR-71 for it, but I haven't seen any news about that uh, for a long time now. Here we go. I think the sound mod is working. And I heard the afterburner click. Okay, rotate. And we are off, yeah. Gear up. Well, looks pretty good so far. I don't know why the vertical stabilizers are flapping like that, but alright. Okay, well, we should probably go east. It's, um, that's probably a straw, stall warning right there. That's fine. I climbed pretty vigorously. Well, that's how we look coming out of Edwards. Okay, 30,000 feet. Let's see how well it gets past the speed of sound. I'm sure somebody's tried this before. I haven't seen any videos about it, but I didn't look for any, so... It seems like an obvious thing to do. I, I didn't really see any articles on the forums about trying to use the stock X-Plane 11 planes in X-Plane 12. But there aren't too many that you would want. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the X-15 is not going to work because it needs the airdrop functionality. And as far as I know, we don't have that. 
I don't know about the space shuttle, but yeah, I mean, I think this is the only one that's sort of pressing. And Mach 1, more drag. Okay. No problems. Mach 1.17 and increasing. I'm sure that can be done smoother, but okay for now. So we've got the numbers in the upper left and they match what we have on the dials here uh, with some slight deviation because of uh, possibly the pressure in the case of the altitude. But everything else is fine. We don't have the silence up front that simulates the mock cone. That's one thing that doesn't happen. I thought that did happen in X-Plane 11, so maybe the sound system's a little bit off. We have reached Mach 2 at 45,000 feet. Or actually more than 45,000. We're climbing pretty rapidly. I was slow to catch up to that. I do have Fort Boy 2's uh, photo scenery in here for California and some other states. I don't think I have New England though, so if we ever get there, if we cross the country, I don't think it'll look quite as good as this. 60,000 feet, no problems. 70,000 feet, well, by some measures. By my altimeter, for sure. And Mach uh, 2.85, it seems, whoa, 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 okay, okay, it's operating a little bit more touchy than normal. <laughs> Seems to have much less trouble getting to Mach 3 than in X-Plane 11, actually. Mach 3, 72,000 feet. We're going to have to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, X-Plane 11, there was a bit of a chore getting it to its rated speed and height. Not so here. This feels about right, to be honest. But what about that fuel consumption? We will see. Mach 3.2. And I am throttling down here. Okay, Mach 3.3, and I'll let it waver a bit. I don't want to use autopilot or anything. That'll be an interesting thing to test, but of course we've got the stability. It's got pitch roll and yaw stability. That's probably why the Vertical stabilizers were wiggling so much, but uh, as far as the rest of the autopilot features, uh, I'll lay off of that. Oh no, I have a chunk missing. Well, that can happen, I guess. This is at the border of... Uh, Oh no, we're well past the Grand Canyon even. I don't know why I have this chunk miss missing. Well, I guess I'll have to double check the scenery download. Yeah, it's really stable. Mach 3.32 is looking fine. Um, not too much variation on that. Close to 80,000 feet. I'm not trying to do anything to force it to be within a tighter band, basically. I'm not doing a whole lot of pitch trim, I'm just letting it waver. And it's pretty okay. I think I did have Arizona scenery from Fort Boy 2, so we do see that over there, and then obviously I don't have that scenery over on this side of the line. But the default scenery is what we have underneath here. And you can see the contrast with the photo scenery that I have over there. The plane itself looks fine to me, considering I don't really have an alternative. We are effectively super cruising. I don't think I have the throttle up so much that the afterburner is being used, so otherwise we would see it probably. We are currently approaching Pueblo, so 
guess we've passed the Rockies. Denver's up there. Let's take a backward look. There's a lot of clouds. Can't really get a sense of the Rockies from this high. It seems like I might have more range than I ought to have. The vertical stabilizer flutter continues. I think it might have too much power. Do you suppose it actually has four engines? <laughs> I mean, uh, that it's effectively configured with four of the engines instead of two? Let me see. Let's get some extra data up here. It does seem to say four engines, but I want to see the thrust on them. Yeah, uh, two of the engines seems uh, seem to have lower fuel flow, so it's probably like compensating for something. Okay, well, let's see. Might not have to do with the way the SR-71 was modeled, but it's clear that we have four different thrusts going on. At this altitude, it wouldn't be the sea level thrust that you often see in documents. We'll keep an eye on those, so... It's something weird about it. It doesn't feel too bad as far as the way it's operating, but it might be a little bit OP. Then again, the SR-71 was a little bit OP, so <laughs> there's that. But I don't have Afterburner on right now, and I probably ought to. I probably should not be able to do this without any Afterburner. Well, see, the uh, autopilot altitude here maxes out at 60,000 feet. <laughs> so that's not going to work out. I was thinking about testing it out, but that doesn't seem good enough. I guess I will point out some other minor things. Uh, oil pressure is reading off the scale high, as far as I can tell. Uh, certainly not in the green zone. And then... Our hydraulic press is beyond the red line limit. So there are minor issues like that. I, I don't know if this fuel tank indicator, what that's trying to, in well that's the pressure, probably shouldn't be zero. But the poundage up here, well that doesn't work. <laughs> um, uh, certainly not matching what's in the upper left corner there in any respect. I haven't seen the ticking down at all. So yeah, not perfect. But were those the issues that caused them not to carry it over into X-Plane 12? I don't know. Or maybe it was because it was developed by somebody and that person couldn't be reached for permission or something like that. I don't know. Well, here we are. We are currently approaching Kirksville. No, I don't know much about Kirksville. What's this here? Quincy. That I have more vague recollection of. So depending on the version of the J-58 that they had, um, the engines were capable of anywhere from 25,000 to 34,000 pounds force each. So right now, at out, that's of course down below. Uh, here at altitude, we're getting about 11,600 right now. We'll see what it is at a lower altitude with the combination of the thrust of each pair, if you will. Oh, we're, we're already getting into Illinois. That's the Mississippi and everything. But yeah, our fuel consumption is just way off, if that's correct up there, which I, it is. So, we're consuming much less fuel than we ought to. And this will have tremendously more range than it ought to. Okay, well, just like that, we are passing uh, south of Lake Michigan. I don't suppose we can catch any glimpse of Chicago at all. Nope. It's all clouds. Okay, now approaching Detroit here.
and same difference. This better be real world weather, I mean, got that enabled. Hello everyone, post commentary me here. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to complete the flight because I was interrupted. It wasn't a sim problem, it was people. And I thought I had more time to complete the flight, but it ended up being that I didn't. So as I crossed into New York State, uh, shortly after this point, I had to quit. And frankly speaking, I don't think I had much of a shot at landing it safely anyway. Uh, I will need more practice on that. But first, I think I will want to tweak it in Plane Maker and tone down the thrust. It's pretty clear that it is because the thrust is so much that we don't have to turn on the afterburner that we're not consuming enough fuel so if we turn tone down the thrust of the engines and I'll probably keep the four engine configuration because I don't understand why that is there so I'll just tone down the thrust on all the numbers in plane maker hopefully that won't cause any other problems and then we should require the afterburner in order to uh, get to Mach 3 and in that case we'll consume more fuel and that's the first thing I'll try and then we'll try tweaking it from there. So anyway, this has been the SR-71 in X-Plane 12. With that I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.